Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj, we are able to hear you. Okay. Om again, to Madame Dasya, Gana Gana Chalakaya Chaksu in Militam Yena, as my Sri Gurubena Mahan. Nua Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorbani Pacharine Nir Vishesa Sindhyavadi Pastyatya De Sitarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Paditanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Can you get my glasses? <coughs> Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, chapter 12, verse number 10. Evam Kristam Stutam Manam Brihyam Yad Asad Chesad Jeevam Ajivam Manyat Tvavam Swabhava Sayakala Karman Namajaya Yevi Kritam Dvitiyam Evam Kristam Stutam Anu Brihyat Yad Asad Chesad Jeevam Ajivam Anyat Dvavam Svabhava Saya Kala Karmam Nama Jaya Yevi Kritam Dviti Dviti Vyam Translation <coughs> Since the universe has no real ultimate existence, the things within it, shortness, differences, grossness, skinniness, Smallness, bigness, result, cause, living symptoms and materials are all imagined. <coughs> they are all pots made of the same substance, earth, but they are named differently. The differences are characterized by the substance, nature, predisposition, time and activity. You should know that all these are simply mechanical manifestations created by material nature. Mm. <coughs> the temporary manifestations and varieties within this material world are simply creations of material nature under various circumstances. Prakutri kriyamanani gunai karmani sarvasyaha the actions and reactions carried out by the material nature are sometimes accepted as our scientific inventions. Therefore, we want to take credit for them and defy <coughs> the existence of God. This is described in the Bhagavad Gita 3.27. Ahankara vimuratma kartahamiti manyate. Due to being covered by the illusory material external energy, the living entity tries to take credit for the differentiated creations within the material world. Actually, all these are being created automatically by the material force set in motion by the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the ultimate cause is the Supreme Person as stated in the Brahma Samhita. Ishwara Paramakrishna Satchitananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinde Sarva Karna Karna. <coughs> he is the cause of all causes, the ultimate cause. In this regard, Srila Madhvacharya says, Evam Sarvam Tata Krita Vayai Kalpitam Vishnur Anya. Evam prakrit yad dara smayam anan yad daro Vishnu eva atas sarva sabdas chatasmin eva Actually, the original cause is Lord Vishnu, but out of ignorance, people think that matter is the cause of everything. 
Raja Gopta Srayam Bhumi Sharanam Chaiti Laukikaha Vyavaharao Natat Satyam Tayo Brahma Srayam Vibhu Things are contemplated on the ephemeral and external platform, but actually this is not the truth. The actual protector and shelter of everyone is Brahman, the Supreme, not the King. Gopti cha tasya prakritis tasya Vishnu svayam prabhu tafa gopti tu prithivi na tvam gopta shite smitaha ata sarva rayais chaiva gopta cha hari ishwaraham sarva sabda divyadyas cha sabda vritir hi karanam svavataram svat Swarva by here, Eka Evam Janardanaha. <clears throat> the actual protectorist of the material nature, the actual protectorist is the material nature, but Vishnu is her Lord. He is the Lord of everything. Lord Janardana is the director both externally and internally. He is the cause of the functions of the words and what is expressed in all sounds. Sira sadora tad yadvan grivayas tadvat eva tu asrayatvam cha goptrip tvam anyasam upacharataha. Lord Vishnu is the resting place of the entire creation. Brahmanohi pratishtaham from Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita 1427. On Brahman, everything is resting. All the universes are resting on the Brahma Jodi and all are the planets are resting on the universal atmosphere. In each and every planet there are oceans, hills, states, kingdoms, and each planet is giving shelter to so many living entities. They are all standing on the earth of feet and legs, torsos and shoulders, but actually everything is resting ultimately on the potencies of the Supreme personality of Godhead. Therefore he is known ultimately as Sarva Karna Karnam, the cause of all causes. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Parasya Shakti Virahaya Suyate Swabhaviki Gyanam Balakriya Cha. This is a verse <coughs> quoted from the Sweta Svatara Upanishads which gives us an understanding that just as there is the person who operates the powerhouse and the powerhouse distributes the power through various electrical connections which somehow pervade every area of a certain geographical area, um, there behind everything that is happening is the ultimate potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord manifests Himself in His own energies and His energies automatically carry out the activities according to His will. He sets everything in place but He also is the overseer and permitter of the activities as they are being performed. The powerhouse is a nice example. We turn on our switch here and the light goes on. But if you were to investigate all the way back to its original source, you would see that when someone created the powerhouse and from that there is a whole complex network of, of uh, <coughs> mechanical arrangements, electrical arrangements, <coughs> in order to distribute that energy through various sources and then eventually comes into your home when you throw the switch on. <laughs> so if <coughs> one thinks, well, I've thrown the switch on, I've made the light come on. <laughs> no, all you did was you allowed that energy to come in by a certain mechanical arrangement which you didn't even produce. <coughs> so in the same way, we should understand that um, everything that we create is simply a reformalization of the energy that's provided by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
We are given some credit as a, we not, not secondary, we call ourselves the third, the third part of the creation. But it's not creation, it's just rearranging the creation into certain forms. Uh, the original source is Vishnu, and from Vishnu, Brahma comes and certain gives and puts the energy in place. And then we take that energy in the form of earth, water, fire, and air, and we create various types of structures such as houses, computers, cars, and whatever. So you might say we, we do some creation, but we simply take what is already given to us. It's not that we produce the elements that make up the creation we make. No. Uh, therefore, we cannot really take credit for whatever we do because everything is given to us and even the intelligence to carry out the activity in order for making these different forms in the material energy is also given by us. So um, we like to take credit, oh we, I'm, we made this nice big building, but where did you get the elements from and where did you get the intelligence from? Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am the intelligence of the intelligence. So Krishna works through the material energy to, to give us the understanding to fulfill our desires in a certain way. And that is coming directly for him. So both the ingredients, the intelligence, and everything else needed is supplied by the Supreme Personality of God. And, and they're all coming from the earth. As it's mentioned here in this translation, all of the different smallness, bigness, grossness, differences, symptoms, they're all coming from the same substance, earth, but they're, they, they're named differently. Um, just like you might say, you know, there is a garden. So in the garden you have flowers, and in the flowers you have varieties, and in the varieties you have more varieties of smell and shape. And uh, so where is it all coming from? The earth. <laughs> Simply coming from the earth, that's all. So the earth is the source, but it produces various types of varieties. So we can make varieties out of all the material energy given to us. For instance, when we build a building, we take water, uh, we take uh, uh, earth, and we mix it together, and then we put it into a, an oven, and using the principle of fire, we make a brick. And then that brick is made to build a house and we make many bricks and you have a house made out of bricks. So what do you do? You just take the water, earth, and you mix it together and put it under heat in a certain you know, time period and then you have a brick. <laughs> so um, we like to somehow or other put ourselves in a position as being, uh, you know, great achievers in creating a nice civilization. But everything is given to us by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And everything, is, even the intelligence to carry it out. And so we should know that all these are, as it says here, manifestations of the material energy. And the material energy is coming from Krishna Prakriti Kriya Manani Guni Karmani Sarvash Ahankar Vihudatma the living entities, uh, the word ahankar and vimuda and karta is that the living entities think that they are the doers of the activities, but they're not. They're simply the puppets that are being given the string pulling by the uh, energy of the material energy. So we work we're more like the puppets, and the material energy pulls the strings, and the and this and the creation of the strings, and the puppet and is created by the puppeteer, and that's Krishna, <laughs> or Vishnu in this case, as it's, as it's given here. Uh, and so, when we understand this particular point, it's very important to understand. We, all we can do is reassemble the material energy and the intelligence, again, that's coming from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
and the activities that we perform even though we put something in place we can't make it happen in a certain way it may not work according to how we want it to work or provide what we want it to provide because ultimately Krishna is the or Vishnu in this case it's mentioned the supreme controller in all the situations both prior to the manifestation during and even when it comes to destruction of that manifestation so the Lord manifests himself he expands himself in three forms of himself for creation for maintenance and for destruction for creation he expands himself as Lord Brahma for ma maintenance he performs the activities as, as Lord Vishnu and for destruction he he uh, empowers and creates Lord Shiva to do this work which are all these are called guna avatars who they function under the, the power of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and uh, so when we when what does this all mean it means nothing belongs to us <laughs> we like to take possession of the things we create and then we think well it's mine but actually it's not and if it was yours then you would be able to keep it but you can't even keep it it goes in a certain time it appears at a certain time and we can't even keep our own bodies what to speak of keeping <laughs> something outside of our own body so the idea is that uh, this helps us to understand that everything centers around the activities of the Lord. So what does that mean? That we have to know what is the Lord's desire for the activities of the living entities in the material world. And the Lord's desire is that we use what he has given us either directly or indirectly. In other words, the manifestations that we have been given and the manifestations that we create from the energy he gives us, both of those should be used in the service of, of him. And then that because that's the principle of detachment and the principle of freedom. We create something, we try to enjoy it, and then when we try to enjoy it, we get entangled in it. Anything that you try to cr control in this material world winds up controlling you. <laughs> because the, the ultimate controller is not us, it's Krishna. So he uses the material energy and we get controlled by that material energy when we try to control it. But when we use it for Krishna's service, engage it in devotional service, then that energy doesn't control us, the energy actually uplifts us and brings us to the stage of, of devotion to Krishna and it gives us detachment from everything material. That's why you see some people perform, practice severe forms of detachment, because they know by trying to enjoy something, you get entangled in that process of trying to enjoy it. So they accept whatever comes easily and use whatever they get in the service of the Lord. It gives them freedom, detachment, and ultimately awakens and develops their Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. So all this is uh, what is being said here, that all these different descriptions of the nature of the material energy are all coming from the earth, and the earth is the product and the possession of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We can't create the earth <laughs> We can only take it and recreate it into something else, but the basic elements are there. And even when things get destroyed, nothing really gets destroyed because everything remains in its basic elementary existence. Earth, water, fire, air, mind, ether, and intelligence cannot be destroyed. They can only be reformulated into different forms because they're ultimately Krishna's uh, basic indigenous energy, which we call material energy. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhumir Apanalobayu, Kamana Bhureva Cha, Ahankar Itiyame 
Vena Prakriti Astada. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. These are my separated, he calls it separated energies. Why they separate it? Because the living entity has taken it and he wants to use it for their own uh, uh, benefit, own sense gratification. But when they are when they are back in devotional service, whatever was used in devotional service, then they reconnect themselves with the original source, and at the same time we connect ourselves with that source through devotional service. Now this is the process of, we have to understand how important this verse is because it helps us to give a sense of detachment from everything. And the problem, and the why we suffer in this material world is because of material attachments. There's no other reasons for suffering. When you're material to attached to anything, that uh, uh, object controls you and forces you to think and act in a certain way. When we are detached from whatever there is no control by that energy and therefore we uh, can act simply on the spiritual platform which is the platform of, of what we say knowledge and ultimately happiness so um, understanding this verse means to understand don't try to control this material energy simply use it for Krishna's service whatever it is uh, then it goes back to its original source, which is what it's meant for, like that. So, uh, but the living entity, being an illusion, thinks if I can do just readjust the material energy, I can become more happy. That's more like the example of uh, the we have the the great historical disaster that happened back around 1911 when a very powerful ship called the Titanic took off from uh, Southampton. This is on the southern shore of the, the island of uh, you know, the United Kingdom, UK. And so that ship was supposed to be invincible. <laughs> and so many, there were like, there were more than a couple thousand people on that ship. It was huge, and there were many levels. When the ship got to a certain area, somehow it went off course and wound up into an icy area where there were huge, gigantic icebergs, so big that they couldn't even see them. They were below the surface of the water. The ship hit the iceberg and it broke. Never, no one ever thought that anything could destroy that ship, but it did. And the people on the bottom, the lower level, those who were on the lower level of the ship, immediately realized there was a disaster happening. But the people on the upper level, they were still having their parties and enjoying their uh, food and drink, that's described. And it took them a little time to actually realize that, you know, we're in trouble. So this is the way we think, and sometimes initially we can't see that we're actually in a disaster that's about to happen. <laughs> and when it finally happens, then we give, become we become aware of what's happening. So, but when in order to avoid that, don't try to control anything in this world. Simply try to use it. That's all, because we can't control it, and we have to give it up after at a certain time. But what remains us, ours, is our relationship with the Supreme Law. And that is the foundation for happiness and for knowledge. So, um, whatever you have, use it in the service of the Lord for the pleasure of the Lord, and that is devotional service. And that is detachment for everything. Krishna is very kind. He allows us to live nicely by using his material energy to uh, construct so many different things for our own comforts and conveniences. But if we go beyond our needs, then we find we have to struggle in order to maintain these things. And at the same time, we get entangled in these things. So, Ishavasham idam sarvam yat kijat 
Bhaktiavanta Jagat Tena Jaktena Bundichaha Madhudaha Kasiswadanam. Everything animate and inanimate is owned and controlled by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and one is entitled to live according to one's quota. Quota means what is needed in order to keep body and soul together, maybe a little bit more for maintaining family and activities and devotional service. There are also necessary paraphernalia. But all this belongs to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We can't take proprietorship of, of anything. All we can do is uh, appreciate the mercy of the Lord as it, as it comes into our life and use whatever we have for His service. And that's detachment. And that's, that's freedom. There's no freedom unless one develops detachment. Attachment is the source of bondage. We should be attached to Krishna. We should be attached to his devotional service. We should be attached to the association of devotees. We should be attached to the activities of devotional service, particular chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. These are, these are the bona fide forms of attachment which awaken our devotion to the Lord and bring about happiness. Uh, if we are attached to anything material, whatever it is, it will eventually cause us some form of unhappiness. Either we can't get the happiness we look for when we have it, or even if we do find some pleasure and some in, we find that in due course of time it's taken away. So one should live in a very detached way or attachment to Krishna. Okay, so I'll stop there and we can uh, see if there's any comments or questions. Honorable Maharaj, thank you very much for your amazing class as always. And thank you so much for such picturesque description. Your examples are so wonderful, Maharaj. And thank you very much for your kind association. And um, devotees, if we have any questions, we can ask Maharaj now. My water bottle's upstairs. There is this background noise. I don't know where it is coming from. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, thank you for such a wonderful class, Maharaj. I do have a question. Yes, can do like a Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, uh, Maharaj, we have all these natural resources that are available all around us uh, and that to a large degree we are exploiting. So, how do we find a balance in actually using those resources uh, and why have they been provided? Like, so when he, Lord, when Krishna has created this material world, he has provided so many great natural resources so why has he given that and so we can live nicely so he wants us to use it yeah so but, the and and the, you take what you need for to live happily and then whatever is there you can use it in his service but we never know how much is enough right for us it's never Never enough. So that's, we have unlimited desires. That's that's the wisdom that's needed in order to live not happily. That is detachment. We have to learn that particular thing. If you, it says, you know, if Krishna provides more without any extra endeavor, then you can accept it and then use it. But the problem is, and when, when we get greedy, and when we try to, you know, work hard to gain more and more and more, then we put ourselves in the consciousness that we are the doer and therefore I am the enjoyer. And if I can simply get this, I will enjoy more. So it's the matter of consciousness. So things that come naturally or without any extra endeavor, for grihasas, those living in family members, they have to make some effort to maintain their family. 
So that effort should be something that doesn't interfere with their spiritual practice or something that supports their spiritual practice. So if we are simply spending the time to accumulate more and enjoy the, the accumulation we get at the expense of our spiritual life, then we are again entangling ourselves in this network of illusion. As a living entity comes to the material world to enjoy, and in order to enjoy, the controlling propensity comes along with it. So when we understand Krishna is the controller and the enjoyer, bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarvaloka maheshwaram suhidam sarvadehinam nishantam yam mantam richchiti. Krishna says, I am bhokta, I am the enjoyer. So he wants us to live happily, nicely. He provides material things, or he gives us the opportunity to uh, arrange material things in our life. But that, if that becomes the goal of life, then uh, we are uh, just entangling ourselves in the network of the material energy, and then that forces us to uh, struggle hard unnecessarily. So you have to know, simplicity is one of the principles of devotional life, to be simple. Now, we can't imitate anybody else. Some people have more, some people have less. The idea is that we think, oh, everyone has to come up to this so, certain standard of having a, so many material arrangements for our happiness. But when it comes right down to it, what do we actually need? And then when we evaluate that clearly, then we can understand, well, this is what my endeavor should be. Yes, Rana. Thank you so much. It take, you know, no one can tell you exactly. There's an old saying in the Christian religion, know thyself. Know what you need in order to become Krishna conscious. Thank you so much, Maharaj. That is the difficult part. I feel I don't know how much I need and what I need <laughs> because we are always planning for the future and we worry about the future. So, Well, that's another problem <laughs> because your worrying doesn't do it. It doesn't change anything. It just makes you more full of anxiety. But we should live nicely. We live in the pleasant present and we plan for the future. But we should know our plans are not simply based on our arrangements. If Krishna doesn't sanction our plans, it doesn't work. So, uh, yeah. So try to see uh, how to live. And you see when something you have is taken away from you, for instance, say you, you lose some money or something. After the time, you, it doesn't mean you don't, you can't go on in life. You go on in life. You just go on without that element that you had before. So you see people living on different levels. Some people have practically nothing, and some people have everything. So it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that by having everything you're better off, or by having nothing you're better off. What it means is you have to live according to what you need. And if you go a little bit beyond that, that's all right. But if you go, if you make that the priority in your life and you worry about it, then you're on the, you're simply in the material energy struggling unnecessarily. Krishna is a provider. He knows what you need. If you engage in devotional service, he'll take care of you. <laughs> takes care of everybody, even the materialists who don't engage in devotional service, but they can't see that. Mm -hmm. 
And Jebura, what is he saying? He's talking to this king who has, you know, so much influence, power, servants, and so many things. But he's trying to explain to him that everything you have and everything you that comes by, you know, is coming ultimately from the earth, which is provided, which is controlled by the Supreme Lord. At least we can appreciate the Lord for whatever he provides and worship him in that mood. I think if we become grateful for whatever we have and not full of anxiety for whatever we lose, we will find it's a very uh, natural way to live. <laughs> That's very important, Maharaj. Thank you. Yes, we need to be grateful for what we have. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Very excited to see you in the U.S., Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm at Shama Gauri's house. Shama Gauri Mataji's house. She's running around the kitchen now. <laughs> oh, very, very happy. Here she comes. You'll see her. Here. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is not a video trick. This is actually real. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, devotees. If you have any more questions, Maharaj, do you have time for questions? Um, yeah, I have another program coming up at the at the half hour, so I have I have about twenty more minutes before we can close. Nina Mataji, please take over. Yeah, sure. Any last minute questions, devotees? Maharaj, I, I was just contemplating on a fact that you stated um, that in this material world, we take the five elements for our use, earth, water, fire, air. And then, then what happens when we put them into the use of the Lord for the pleasure of the Lord? It gets purified and hence we shed it? Well, we, we take those elements and we create things out of them. Houses and cars, computers, everything material is made out of these five elements. Basically four, but there is also space, also space is also the fifth element, or we call it ether. Just like sound waves, you can't broadcast anything unless you work with the ether. Ether is the element for broadcast. Mm -hmm. Sound travels through ether. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, sound can never go <clears throat> anywhere. It stays just where it is. Mm -hmm. So you need that ether ele ethereal element to make sound move through. We, we created these electronic devices by which we can pick up the sound and then transform it or transmit it through the ether. I'm speaking somewhere now and you're in another place and you're hearing it. Without the ethereal element, it doesn't work. Right. Yes, Prabhuji. Maharaj, thank you so much for explaining. Mm. And when we shed this physical body, we do not carry all those elements with us anymore? They, they, they again, re amalgamate into the, the original source. They go back to the source. That's mentioned in the Bhagavatam, that through cre creation comes from subtle to gross, and destruction goes from gross to subtle. Mm -hmm. So earth merges back into fire, into, into water, water merges into fire, fire merges into air, air merges into ether, ether merges into mind, mind merges into intelligence, and then, and then all that merges into false ego, 
and then that mat merges back into the, its original source, the aggregate of all the material energies. So that's the re, that is destruction or annihilation. That happens on the individual level, and it happens on the on the universal level also. And creation is the opposite. Mm -hmm. Creation is everything comes through false ego and then intelligence, mind, and all the way goes. Earth being the grossest of all elements is the final manifestation of the material energy. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Maharaj, when you say it's merging at the individual level, um, can you explain a bit more, please? It just, it just, the word itself is explanatory. Earth merges into water, water merges into That's fire. It. All the elements merge back into to each other until they come all the way on, back to their source again. That's all. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful, Maharaj, as always. Thank you so much. Thank you always for your explanation. Thanks for your patience, for kindly explaining again and again, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for your association. Hare Krishna. Uh, is that, was that clear, that last statement? Say again, Maharaj, what did you say? What was the, the last thing I, I said? Yes. The, the yes. Last, yes, Maharaj, when you clear? say the earth merges into water, it makes sense, like the, the whole thing. But I, uh, so yeah, I mean, logically, I, I think I'm able to comprehend. So we have all those elements inside us. So the earth element inside the individual body merges into the water element individually. Yeah. I and, see. Then, and then it goes back down to. You know, and that is the uh, ultimate. That is a, that's the reverse of the creation. The reverse of the creation is the destruction. That's all. You're right, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Very nice uh, class, Maharaj. Uh, you nicely said, uh, I love the point uh, of all the elements that Krishna gave us. There are about 118, <laughs> according to the scientist, but they can't uh, just understand that they come from a superior uh, source and we exploit them every day. Uh, very beautiful. Even um, your story of Titanic, you bring us back to Titanic. And when you were saying, you know, on the upper level, there were uh, rich people who were... Uh, enjoying practically uh, gambling, women and wine. So this also explained in a 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, when there is a scene of Nal, Kuvera and Mani Greva, they were uh, falsely puffed up or their, of, their, um, of their wealth, you know, and you connected that story to in this uh, uh, scene through the Titanic. Very beautiful, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your nice uh, class. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Man. Hare Bhavaraj, Hare Krishna. Chai. And uh, and I am uh, a little envious. <laughs> I don't know if I should say. Shama Gauri Devi Dasi Mataji is having your association so closely. It's uh, it's so beautiful. I would love to be in that house right now and, uh, and have your association and her association yeah, too. You can. <laughs> That's nice, but after a couple of days, she's going to be pulling her hair out. So. <laughs> <laughs> She is a great devotee, Maharaj. She is always engaged. Everybody is invited, Prabhu. Everybody is invited here. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Then we will pray for you. She is going to look like me. Okay, did we end here? <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Okay. Devotees, no last minute questions? Okay, yes, Maharaj, we can end. 
Okay, thank you. My obeisances to all of the devotees. Vancha Kalpa, Tempus Jai, Tempus Sinu, Tempus Jai, 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 Tempus